Jamil Jaffer is the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute at the George Mason University's Law School and joining us now. Um, as we um, come to this interview, a little bit of breaking news because uh, Donald Trump has released a statement now saying that he does expect to be indicted again by the special counsel for his role in January the 6th, saying pretty much he's received a target letter, which is a typical step before an actual indictment. So that would be indictment uh, number three, and of course still waiting on what happens here in Atlanta, which would be indictment number four. So we are uh, trying to uh, track some details on that down. Meantime, uh, for the second indictment, <laughs> I don't mean to jump around the, the Florida case here with the classified documents, it's a lot to keep uh, track of. but. The, the big picture here is that this judge does have some key decisions. How all of these top secret documents are going to be handled because a lot of fingers need to touch those and see those uh, pages, but who can and who can't is important. And then two, the timing of this thing, uh, whether it happens before the election. Trump wants an indefinite uh, delay and how the judge responds to that is critical. Uh, what do you expect from this hearing today? What's the most critical decision you think has to be made? Well, Rob, I think the most important decision we're going to hear about today, or at least the, the debate we're going to have before the judge, the arguments are going to be about the Classified Information Procedures Act. It's a 1980s law um, that uh, governs how classified materials brought into uh, litigation matters. Uh, it allows the prosecution to submit some uh, evidence for review by the judge in camera that's behind closed doors, um, as well as to provide to the jury and to the, and to the judge unclassified summaries of evidence of classified material that the parties can agree upon. So there are procedures designed to protect classified information and make it accessible uh, to the juries and the decision makers who need to see it. Um, but that is, you're exactly right, Rob, one of the challenges to confronting this case. And in terms of the timeline, the calendar here, um, I, I mean, listen, it, it, it's, it's tough. We've never seen anything like this before. All of this is unprecedented. Um, but from a calendar perspective here, you have the feds who say, let's start in December. And you have the Trump team saying, let's start mm -hmm. after the election. Um, how does this judge approach that issue? Because no matter what she does, it's going to be seen as helping one side, hurting another, or be, or be seen through a political prism, particularly because she has a political history uh, with Donald Trump uh, that's come under scrutiny before. How does she handle the timing of all this? It, it's tricky no matter what she does. Well, as a general matter, you know, uh, defendants typically want and are guaranteed by the Constitution a right to a speedy trial. Uh, in this case, you have a defendant who would prefer to delay as long as possible, in part because I think Donald Trump assesses, likely correctly, that the pendency of this litigation actually benefits him uh, as a political matter uh, with his base. Uh, beyond that, I mean, I think the challenge uh, for the judge is she's going to have motions from the, from the prosecution to move quickly, motions, as you said, from the defense already we've seen uh, to leave this past the election. And Donald Trump's assessment beyond his political assessment is that if he is elected, right, he can he can decide whether to uh, require the Justice Department to drop his prosecution, right, as as command as as the head of the executive branch. And so um, this is, uh, as you say, Rob, unprecedented. Uh, in the past, there has been uh, one uh, individual who ran uh, sort of prominently a socialist who ran for uh, for election from jail um, and said he would pardon himself. Uh, Donald Trump has indicated um, that that's something he's got under consideration as well. Um, and so, you know, this is one of the big challenges of prosecuting not just a former president, but an active presidential candidate. Um, and it raises uh, challenges to the Justice Department as well, because they'll be seen as being political regardless of what they do. I um, mean, then on your last point, Rob, about the judge, you're right. Um, there have been allegations or concerns raised about her because she was appointed by President Trump. Worth noting that district judges generally are, are recommended by their home state senators um, and then nominated by the president, confirmed by the Senate. Uh, Judge Cannon did have some interesting rulings in the prior matter, the special master's case uh, that was ultimately re uh, reversed by the 11th Circuit. But that probably makes her likely to be more cautious. And I think as a general matter, we can assume that she's going to you know, steer down the middle, as most district judges do. Yeah, a very harsh spotlight uh, on her. Uh, and we'll get a little window into all of that uh, today as this hearing gets underway. Let me ask you this. What do you think is a tougher situation? I don't necessarily mean the politics. I mean, in terms of a nation, I think... Mm -hmm. A little weary of scandal and drama here. Is it tougher to have someone as a front runner for president who was under multiple indictments, perhaps as many as four, with perhaps some of the legal matters playing out uh, in trial uh, as he's running, or delaying things but having someone win the presidency back and then be in a situation where he could get rid of these investigations or? 
take us deeper into uncharted water by perhaps pardoning himself. <laughs> None of it seems particularly pretty, but what's the lesser, what's the more swallowable of those two scenarios as a country? You know, it's really, yeah, Rob, it's really hard to assess that uh, from, a, from a public perception perspective and from a rule of law perspective. That's ultimately the, the goal here is to ensure the rule of law is upheld. You know, Donald Trump obviously has put himself in this position by taking those documents, those classified documents down to Mar-a-Lago, retaining them after the Justice Department told him to return them, um, asked him to return them, making his lawyers, if the, if the allegations are proven true, making them certify uh, something that wasn't true, which is that he didn't have any more documents after having moved the boxes. Again, these are all facts. He's presumed innocent until proven guilty uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. And so, you know, he's obviously going to dispute these facts. But if the facts are proven, uh, then, you know, he he deserves the punishment that he would get uh, from a judge. At the same time, you also have a situation where uh, we had we had a really horror, horrific challenge on January 6th um, with an insurrection where he stood at the at the White House ellipse and called upon protesters to go to the Capitol knowing they were armed. Um, and so these are the situations that happen, um, you know, when um, when you have presidents behave or former ex-presidents behave in this manner. And so the Justice Department's in an awkward position having to prosecute an active presidential candidate. Um, but at the same time, you know, looking at from their perspective, uh, they're probably saying, look, there are lots of folks out there who have been prosecuted for uh, mishandling classified information. Why should an ex-president uh, be any different? Again, if you were still the president, it's a different story. But at the time these things are alleged to have happened, um, he was he was an ex-president. Other than that, not much going on, Jamil. Uh, <laughs> always enjoy our conversation. And I do want to reiterate for the folks at home the breaking news, major, I would argue, uh, breaking news that uh, former President Trump says he has been told by the special counsel that he is indeed the target of a criminal probe into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That is the big breaking news um, at this hour uh, as he has a hearing on the classified documents case that will begin today. And, of course, as we await what the DA here in Atlanta will do, which could be um, a third or fourth uh, indictment, depending on how it plays out. Jamil, please come back. Always appreciate uh, your expertise uh, and your insight. Thanks, Rob.